Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. I am very grateful that I'm able to feature such a wide spectrum of amazing guests on my show who inspire all of us to strive in reaching a higher standard for ourselves. And I want to thank you for tuning in today. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is one of the most influential forces in the fashion industry in Hawaii. She is a celebrity stylist, makeup artist, and television personality. She is the queen of style, <laughs> Crystal Ponsi Ponsi, and today we are going beyond fashion. Hey, Crystal. Hey. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you for having me. You know, I love to say Crystal Ponzi Ponzi. <laughs> and you say it so well. I gotta say, every time we're at a vet together, yeah. I when you when you say my name from across the room, I'm like, Rusty's here. Yeah. <laughs> no one says it like you, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Crystal, tell me about your youth, about where you grew up and what schools you went to. I grew up. I'm homegrown. Oh, yeah. I think we just had this conversation. Yeah. I'm born and raised in Wahua, Wahua General Hospital. Um, grew up there. Went to Ka'ala Elementary. I went to Wahua Intermediate, and then I graduated. I'm a Lelahua mule. Yeah. Proud former cheerleader. I gotta say. Yeah. But um, yeah, I call it the pineapple pine, pineapple town, and I have an affinity for pineapple. It's my logo for my company now, but it's. That's Wahua. And what kind of activities did you do when you were growing up? I mean, I did everything. I mean, growing up, I mean, I was always, I was always an artist. I loved drawing. Um, I was part of every student government, interact club, <laughs> rotary, anything I could get my hands on. Um, I did a lot of community service. I went to church next door, and I also became a cheerleader in my yeah. junior year, which really got me out of my shell. Um, and then went on and being, you know, a dancer that led into other things after. <laughs> <laughs> and at what college did you end up uh, going to? I went to the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And what yeah. did you study? I studied, uh, so I, fit, I had a major in both business marketing and um, fashion. I went to the fashion school there, so, but I started in architecture. You know, when you go to school, and I'm, you know, first generation um, to go to college. Yeah. My, my, my mom is from the Philippines. My dad never got to, went to college. And I, it was just a lot of pressure for me to go to college. And I knew no matter what, I had to go. And um, I was going to go and be an architect. Wow. Right. And, you know, you think you're going to do that. And that was my craft and my drawing. Super side note, growing up, I was always doing makeup. <laughs> That's, you know, side, my side business that actually what started what I did, but yeah. that was never a career. It just made extra money for me to commute every day from Waihua to UH. And then on my junior year, I guess my sophomore junior year, I took an art class, a fashion illustration liberal class, and I'm like, this is what I want to do. <laughs> and of course, my parents were like, you're not going to school to learn how to sew. I'm like, I believe, I believe this is something I'm meant to do. I will be <laughs> successful. So hence had to go into business, and then figure out the rest. And you, your daughter Haley, she goes to Damien, and I, I yes. love that because I went to Damien. Yes. Tell, tell me about Haley. Uh, my Haley. Yeah. It's been me and Haley. Uh, Haley's 15 now, um, and I'm so proud of her. I'm, I'm a single mom, so, you know, we just, for her to go to school and then raise her and lead her by example, but really finding her own way um, and really leading her by example to find her own, her own things. She's not a fashion girl. <laughs> as, uh, she has her own individuality. That, I've always been supportive of that, but she's a total athlete. She plays club volleyball. She's found a love for soccer. She's all into football and sports. Are her love language is definitely beyond the lines. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's going to have to read the book. Yes, I already told her yeah. that she needs to. <laughs> now, you mentioned that you, were, you would be doing some makeup uh, yep. side jobs. What was your first official job that you got paid for? In my life? In your life. In my life, gosh, I've had a very, I felt I've always worked. Um, yeah. Growing up, my family had a vending machine business okay. called Jay's Vending. My dad was known as the Pepsi man oh. in the whole town of Waihua. But he would take all the old machines, and in our red dirt road in Waihua, 
He would fix the machines and we'd plant them all over. So every weekend, my brother and I, every Saturday and Sunday, and this is what we did. We didn't even know we were working. We just wanted <laughs> free soda, um, but which was not free. That's is why. Um, so we would help him buy all the soda, go around all of Hawaii, take inventory, fill the sodas up. I did the inventory. I, I did the books. Wow. I counted a change. And this was before Coinstar. Yeah. This was like he dumped it all over. He sorted it through. And that was my first job was for the family. And then that also then led to other jobs. So, so Crystal, <laughs> how did you first get into fashion? How did I first get into fashion? That is definitely a very colorful story yeah. <laughs> how i got first into fashion was that i've always loved it so okay. i found my passion and my love and i never you know i had that dream i mean i was definitely it was probably that 12 i was a middle school girl with my best friend we would like take the cover of vogue and dream and again in wahua that was definitely us going to new york was yeah. like picking up that vogue <laughs> magazine and i think that's when i fell in love with it um i think i was introduced to it at a very young age, but I wasn't a, ever a quote unquote fashion girl. I was definitely always the beach girl, country girl, grew up down North Shore with my dad, camping, spearfishing, all of that. But my mom was definitely who influenced me. Huh. She um, was a buyer for Shirkia um, and she worked with Liberty House. She traveled all over. I just really didn't know what she did growing up. But um, I think that was my first bit into being influenced of what I this world yeah. of fashion yeah oh, and you know you're, you're such a successful entrepreneur yeah. you know you started ponzi mm -hmm. style can yes. you sh share with everybody what ponzi style is so ponzi style is basically a full service fashion production and management company so i started as a freelance makeup artist yeah. that then got very busy but i never marketed myself as a makeup artist i think it goes it stems from back when my mom and my family was like that is not a career i was like <laughs> okay that is not a career but i'm really good at this and people are are paying me cash for this. Yeah. So how do we incorporate this into a business? And I've always said it's because in Hawaii, we didn't have that industry here. So I really had to carve it out and get creative. And um, I want so I started freelancing yeah. and started from high school that led into college. My friends who were going to the club or getting married would also call me. It was all word of mouth, not, not a business per se, just freelance. And then what really flipped in my business was when after I wanted to, you know, create a line or create this empire. Um, I wanted it to be Ponzi, which was whether a fashion brand or a TV show. Um, but then from one makeover to the next, that's basically what led me here. And I've always marketed it as a full service and not just makeup. It wasn't just styling and wardrobe and it was beauty, fashion and lifestyle. Everything that was behind the scenes that inspired women to be their best selves. And some years ago, Crystal, I was watching the Today Show, yeah. and <laughs> I see that they featured you on the Today Show yes. as the beauty and fashion expert. Thank How was you. that experience? That was a dream come true. And it was one of those things, like when you find your bliss and you find these things and you get this momentum, there's me with Savannah. I mean, I always believe, and my biggest dream was to be on TV, for Hawaii, because we didn't have that. We didn't have outlets to be watching makeover shows. And I lived on Style TV. So when the Today Show called me, I would, and it was a power of yes. Someone's like, I heard your name. This is what you've been doing with your work. Would you be able to be on the Today Show? And mind you, I was already doing smaller TV segments. I started with Living Local with the Baracchios, oh, yeah. which then prepared me for something like the Today Show. But they were like, this is a Today Show, and it's all news, and it's two o'clock in the morning and we don't have a budget but would you be able to do this and i'm like absolutely yes and with favors and friends and being able to you know really give hawaii fashion a platform that was my my dream yeah no you were fantastic on <laughs> that show you. too and now you're you're a regular on living 808 i am how is I that am. experience for you oh it's so fun i mean it's it's so so fun i um again living 808 i love john i love trini i love um now tanya, tanya and, yeah. and it's it's one of those dreams again we didn't have outlets outside from the morning news to do a fun tv segment that really shared people's stories and these makeover tips and so being able to do that i'm, I'm con consistently on but they give me the creative freedom 
to really share national trends that go uh, you know, beyond Hawaii, but then also relates to our local market. And that's where I've always believed that Hawaii has such a pulse within the fashion industry that when I started, everyone's like, oh, you're just that Hawaii girl, or you're, Hawaii doesn't have fashion. And yeah, maybe we are behind, but you know, we're people and we love being inspired by the world. And it is an industry, and guess what? Hawaii and all our retail world is the number one gross generating stores because of our markets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I tell everybody that you're the queen of style. <laughs> Thank you. I honestly, I honestly know that. I believe it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you. That's like every time you say that, I'm like, oh, I'm just someone that's <laughs> trying to make, make people over one person at a time. <laughs> Now, Crystal, you're also the contributing stylist to yeah. Ala Moana Magazine yes. and Modern Luxury Magazine. Yes, add that to the list. I mean, yes. I don't know how you do everything, <laughs> but how, how was that experience for you? Oh, again, another dream. I mean, I, Ala Moana Magazine has been the creative outlet. It's my editorial covers. I was able to, and Ala Moana and Modern Luxury are sister publications, and yeah. I was allowed to really work with so many beautiful models and celebrities. But being able to get my hands into working with these de designer brands that I, I was like, wow, I don't really need to move to New York. Like the big pineapple is here. We don't have to go to the big apple. Yeah. And it's just a great creative outlet. And what I love most about uh, working in that is the team that I am with. I call them my glam fam, Adam, Jake, Mariah, Jasmine. It's one of those because we work so far in advance. So it was, it's not even about the pretty pictures. It's the creative process and creating these experiences together that everyone is so good in their expertise that we create something so amazing that when we do pay this forward in a cover, hopefully inspires that little girl in Oahu and picks it up and maybe says, one day I can go to New York and work in fashion or one day I can create a line. So. Well, I, I have to <laughs> say, those mag I mean, the magazines, I mean, with you being the stylist for it. I mean, it's like really high quality. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's always been, and we want to take it to the next level all the time. But for every issue, we're like, how, what, what can we do next? Yeah. What can you want we to do I'll do what you've done. That's why <laughs> you're never complacent. <laughs> never, never. I think, and that's the beauty of fashion. It's always changing. Yeah. Fashion as an industry is always changing, but style is something so personal. And that's why I love working with people on that level, outside from the editorial world, working with, you know, someone who's going on a TV show or someone who's like, hey, I need help because, you know, I'm going on a trip or I'm taking headshots. So I believe in personal branding and yeah. that's what I do. Yeah. So, okay, so how do you help somebody with their fashion and with their style? What do you do? So fashion, I mean, again, I love the makeover process and people with me because I... Fashion and beauty is such a non-threatening, <laughs> you know, word. And you're like, hey, I'll be your best friend. But really what it is, it's finding the right fit for that person. So yeah. fashion, again, is always changing. Brands and labels are always trying to sell you something. But for you as an individual, I'm always trying to get to know you first. Yeah. And what your lifestyle is, you know, what your persona is, what you're trying to achieve, you know, in whatever part, whether you're running for president or if you're going to be on the news or I'm like, hey, I started a business and I'm gonna be featured in this TV show. Everything that you wear is a representative of a message you're trying to deliver. And that's what personal branding is. So when I try to, like you, when I try to go onto a new project, I do my homework, I profile it, and then I take everything I've learned, and it's all marketing at the end of the day, and then apply it to that individual person. So Crystal, mm -hmm. which celebrities do you feel like, maybe one or two celebrities that have the best style right now? One or two celebrities, outside from you? <laughs> Gosh. You're too kind. <laughs> um, who, so I love, um, God, it's so hard. It just depends on who I'm looking at, who I look for all the time. I yeah. mean, I love Jennifer Lopez okay. because she delivers, she gives us a show all the time. Yeah, she's style. So I'm all, yeah. you know, and she has a whole team. So I love her team and that's like my celebrities. I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> um, so I do love Jennifer Lopez. Lopez. I love Carolina Herrera, who's a designer. She's always chic and classic. Meghan Markle. I love watching her fashion journey since she's become, you know, this princess, but she's pregnant but i loved her before i used to read her blogs oh, prior yeah. um for men oh, 
David Beckham. Oh, he's David always Beckham. like put together, but there's always something a little rock star about him, <laughs> um, and he's always in a suit. And I was like, guys, you should always tr invest in a good suit. Okay. Invest in a tailored blazer. That's my tip. And my dream um, would be a TV show. I love Queer Eye. Yeah. Um, it, but it would be a version for Hawaii where I would make over the men of Hawaii ambush style. Yeah. I was like, let me help you. So that way we crop some really good, amazing men from Hawaii. You're cracking me up, Crystal. <laughs> Crystal, we're going to take a quick break. Yeah. And then when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond fashion. Absolutely. <laughs> You're watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Crystal Ponce Ponce. We'll be back in a quick minute. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is one of the most influential forces in the fashion industry in Hawaii. She is the queen of style, Crystal Ponce Ponce. And today we are going beyond fashion. Crystal, you're also helping a lot of our local TV news anchors. Yes, uh, yes. That, that, that's um, Recently I've worked with, not only on TV, yep. but I, do, I work behind the scenes. That's my most comfortable place. I work with all the news kids. There's Stephanie Lum. I do their hair, their makeup, styling, and styling is like, what color should I wear? You know, because when you are a different profession, you should be wearing certain things so that way it just really heightens, you know, where you are in your life. So I've been able to have so much fun with every personality, I feel <laughs> like. Um, and, you know, I've been friends with all of the anchors. And, you know, growing up, these are people that you're like, wow, <laughs> you know, I want to be Trini. I want to be Bernadette Baracchio. And now they're all friends. And I'm, in, I'm able to, you know, work behind the scenes with them. Yeah, totally. And, and learn. Yeah, and learn. And they're all such great people. Oh, and, yeah. and you know what, Crystal? You are also helping Tulsi. Yes. Tulsi Gabbard. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. How is that going? I love her. Yeah. She's one of my favorite people. I mean, I've known her for the course of seven years now. I've yeah. been on her team since the beginning. I am her hair and makeup artist. So if she has to wake up, I will say if Tulsi can, then I can. So if I have a call time at one o'clock in the morning, and yes, that's the crazy part of my world. It's not always glamorous. It's really not. Um, you wake up early, you get them ready. And I was, by being around her, has really taught me so many life lessons yeah. and how we can better serve. And um, I help her get ready. So, I mean, you know, we, we hang out and we have girl time. I mean, she's a woman and she inspires me all the time. And this next chapter and running for president is a really exciting time for her. And I'm, a lot, I'm, I'm really happy and blessed to be part of that journey. Yeah, and she's such a nice person. Yes. And, you know, when you said that it's not glamorous all the time, mm -hmm. you know what was glamorous? you getting to go to the Grammys this year. <laughs> How was Thank that you. experience? Do you like the, it's such a different world. I go from one place, you know, to the next. <laughs> and that's exactly the world of Ponzi. <laughs> um, another, you know, the power of yes. Um, I was allowed to go to the Grammys. And it's, again, a bucket list of mine. And I used to host, like, Grammys post-Fashion Week. Who wore it best? Who wore it worst? And I'm like, one day, I'll go to the Grammys. And... Um, I was able to go this past year with uh, recording artist Kimmy A. Minor. Yeah. And she asked me, she was like, hey, sis, you know, I'm going to the Grammys. And I didn't realize the, the magnitude is not just a day. It's not just a show. It's an entire week. Yeah. And it's the biggest music convention. She's like, I'm going to L.A. Can you help outfit me? And I'm like, tell me your events and tell me your dates. And then we'll curate you for each thing. 
And then I was like, hey, I think I'm going to be in LA because I was going to do another photo shoot. And this, everything's serendipity in my life. <laughs> it really does just kind of magically all tie in together. It's like, I think I'm going to be there. I can make it work. And that's my, I was like, I'll make it work. And I ended up going with no expectation ever. I'm like, let me help you. I'll get you ready. She's like, I go, that's my birthday weekend too. <laughs> so I'll catch the red eye. I'll end up in LA. I'll get you ready. She's like, do you want to go? And I'm like, oh, yes, girl. I got my dress. <laughs> you know, I'm always ready. Tip, well, you know, another tip is always have your bag in your trunk just in case. <laughs> Extra shoes, an earring, some body wipes. That way you're ready. <laughs> well, she was smart to, to invite you to go. And that's, that's amazing oh, that you gosh. had that experience. And then we were front row when Kalani Pea won his second Grammy and then it wasn't just that it was a whole day the, the Grammy show was from 11, 11 o'clock that morning to 11 o'clock that night and the after parties and then when we got into the convention and then all those artists were there and I love music yeah love music so I was like okay fashion week I've done New York I've conquered Front row, I'm like, the Grammy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Crystal, you're somebody that I know that definitely go beyond the lines. Thank you. How do you, how do you like my book? I love your book. I actually, you gave this to me, and you've been telling me, you need to read my book, and you came, <laughs> and I read it again, pre preparing, and I love it. I feel like it's such an easy read for anybody. Yeah. Entrepreneurs, give it to your, your kid. Um, and it, when I was reading it, it just really affirms the principles that I live by. So thank you for reading your book. You yeah, know? because you're so detailed and disciplined and you have a high standard of excellence. I mean, it's amazing what you thank do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, detail, disciplines, having integrity um, and always, you know, saying, doing it, giving it your all. Um, and also finding your purpose. Yeah. The people that you're around has attributed to everything that I've done and in inspired me. It wasn't, it's not just me. And um, I feel like leaving your legacy at the end. And that's, oh, that's my why. Yeah. And my why is, you know, how can I leave a legacy for my daughter who is watching me every step of the way? So thank you for your, your book. Oh, you, you just gave me a ticklish feeling inside of me, Crystal. <laughs> no, so I'm going to write a book next. <laughs> yeah. I can help you with that. Yes, yes, there you go. <laughs> now, Crystal, I want to ask you, was, have you had like a major adversity in your life ever? Mm -hmm. And if it was, how did you overcome that? So adversity, yes. I mean, it's not all glamorous again. At the end of the day, I mean, I, it's hard, hard work. Every single time. I mean, every day I'm like, why? And um, adversity of how I started, and I think we started talking to you about it, is um, I think really young on, I had to grow up. And we grew up all at certain parts of our life. But when I was 21, I was just graduating from college. I was in Europe, and I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to live in New York. I'm going to live in Paris. And I came home my last year, and that's when um, my, I learned that my dad had lung cancer and that he had three months to live. That was the day I came back home. I'm like, well, I have to finish. And so I stayed my last year of college back here in Hawaii. I was a caretaker. Um, and then I was like, I'm just going to graduate, double major. And then as soon as I graduated, dad had passed the day before, and then I found out I was pregnant. I'm a single mom. So being a single mom already is, is a, it's a challenge. And going back home to Wahiwa and then really learning to, okay, am I, what, what now? And that what now and that sometimes that really tough times of your life make you and challenge you to a point where you can't give up. And there was, for me, it was like, how do I say, be a good mom and raise my kid by myself? How do I live my dreams and my goals? And how do I inspire other women that you don't have to be another statistic? I was like, you can do it all with a kid in tow. You can create a, a, a career for yourself in a place like Hawaii. And I love Hawaii, but it, didn't, it wasn't here for me. And you can create an industry and a company that just encompass everything that you're, you're meant to do. And then you can also help others at the same time. So... Yeah. Well, Crystal, 21. you're definitely inspiring <laughs> a lot of single moms out there yeah. to, to know that they can be a, a great single mom yeah. and to really pursue their, their work, you know, their yeah. dreams. Yeah. So that's amazing. Thank you. Very inspirational. Thank you. And everyone doesn't know, yeah, it started from the back of my car with a kid in tow. And 
and, um, and sure faith and belief and lots of hard work and the people that you're around. So, yeah. yeah. Crystal, <laughs> what's, what's an important lesson that you've learned in your life so far? I learned that life is short. Um, and, and in a way that it's like, oh, you know, not, not in a very cliche way, but when, when going back to when I was 21, you know, sometimes you get the snippet of what your world's going to look like and you hope for. And, you know, I had these big goals. And then you realize that all you have are moments. And if you don't make the most of those moments, and when my dad had passed and then I had life that came up, these moments don't matter. I mean, they, not, not, excuse me, they, the moments matter most and you only have one life to live. So yeah. why not live it to the fullest and live your best life? Yeah, yeah. no, that makes yeah. sense. And who is someone that has inspired you uh, to be who you are today? Oh, gosh, one person. I yeah. mean, I feel like there's so many people that in my different paths of my life inspire me. One person that's really helped shape me, um, outside from my mom, I call her my Filipino Anna Wintour. <laughs> yeah. You know, she keeps me on my toes all the time. And, you know, she was always perfect. And, you know, going, she's like, you always have to look through, even if you're going to the grocery store, you yeah. have to look, <laughs> put together. But the woman that I really attribute my career and the person that really sparked the belief in me was Bernadette Baracchio. Nice. I started with Living Local with the Baracchios and the Five Sisters. And... Um, I just was like, I want to do a TV show. I want, I want to be able to do magazines. I want to do it all. And she was like, okay, let me help you. And I started making over the sisters. I did their hair, makeup, and styling. She gave me my first TV segment. And that's when we started Ponzi Style, yeah. Style File. I went to New York. I was there at Fashion Week. And she gave me, she's like, with well, $300, can you do it? And I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> and that's when I did my first TV show. Um, called, you know, my, my tagline was from the big apple to the big pineapple, you've been pontified on style file. And I was backstage at the Kimora Lee fashion show. Um, I interviewed um, all these amazing recording artists and fashion influencers. And this was be before social media. Yeah. And, um, and from there, she's able to, she taught me how to do it all and go beyond the lines yeah. for your dreams and goals. Yeah, you, you know, you're right, though. The Baracchios, they, they did it all. I mean, they yeah. were amazing. They yeah. definitely go beyond the lines. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And the, core, and the core is, at the end of the day, it's all about family. Yeah. And so that's why I love what I do in this grand scheme of things, but I also love being from Hawaii. It really just grounds you and says, okay, you've done this. But you're still that Waihua girl that's still trying to grow. For sure. <laughs> Crystal, before we wrap up, I want to know, what are you hoping to aspire to achieve in your future? Because you, you've achieved so much so already, but what Thank are you, you hoping to achieve in your future? In my future, there's always, I think every day, you kind of want to always say, okay, I've checked off this list. And it, it wasn't a list for me, but now I definitely want to grow into a whole digital platform. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to have a show, and even though there's not, it, I do so many TV shows, I'm launching the big, you know, the Ponzi style blog. Yeah. Um, so that way I can just reach to more women. And then we're doing a YouTube channel. Finally, I'm going to do all my how to videos awesome. and interviews and then and grow. I definitely want to create a product line. And that's something that's in the works. So it's always exciting. And we always do more events. So. Crystal, I don't know how you do everything that you do, but I see you doing it all. And <laughs> I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. Thank you for having me. Awesome, Crystal. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. And a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit RustyKamori.com. And my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that Crystal and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.